Hi, welcome to class. We're the only two right now, but the other ones will show up eventually, right? Hmm. I hate my life. I hate my life. Hey, Professor Sunrise Productions! Hello, class. Professor Sunrise here. In today's class, we're gonna take a look at my current build of Brave Bird World and how I actually did the combos with it. So I'm gonna showcase you the most basic combos, probably just Lulu and Kalud. And from there on, you will have to figure out the combos by yourself because as the deck virtual itself, it's very non-linear in the combos. Um, but basically, if you know the end goal, you will always know how to get there with the most combinations of hand because at one point, they will become quite linear. We're going to talk about um, how the combos differ, how you play around different uh, anti-cards like Droplet and Super Polymerization when I go for early Crystal Wing routes, etc. etc. All, all of this in this video today. Today, so without further ado, don't forget to like and subscribe, leave some feedback down below, and let's get right into the video. So, before I showcase you guys the most basic form of combo, which will be just Lulu Kaloon, um, I want to ask you guys if you prefer me to do these type of videos with more real cards, so you have like a feeling of how we maybe it plays out, or do you want it just to be done on Dooling Book where the um, video quality, uh, uh, quality will be a little bit better at least, because my, of course, my camera is fine, you can definitely... Um, see everything um but it's just not the best so definitely let me know in the comments uh so let's just start out with the most basic form of combo lulu kaloon um we will have, of course have three hand cards in here first of all uh, if i had exactly this then i would play it out differently we will get to use the, the usage of prosperity later on in this video um but for now uh remember this is not how it would play out in real life it's just the most basic form let's just say we have these two cards and three no, let, it could be three droplets for example uh, let's use Kaloon. Paired this here a little bit, get the Chucha. Um, then you use Lulu on the Chucha. Send a Queen Long. Add GG. We want to be adding GG at all times because this will let us go into a Charge Warrior before we use the Queen Long so we can get a draw. Uh, GG is also the most important one. And also, we want to, uh, just because of the uh, follow up it offers, uh, this is very important in this uh, version because it, this does go a little more all in. So, we definitely want the GG add back. Um, and GG adding first just makes the most sense in hands like this. Uh, GG on the Lulu, we will be sending a John Wu um, just because a Chucha doesn't really do a lot for us currently, just the way this plays out uh, because we will need the extra resources to be drawn into either via. Um, Charge or we could use a prosperity to dig for something, and Jun Wu will have some um, usage for us if we get hand trapped, for example. Um, so now we th go turn these into a charge warrior, charge warrior draw. I like to do this before uh, I commit to the Queen Long search, um, just because it tells me what resources I will have available to me, and this lets me add with Queen Long accordingly. Um, the, uh, in a hand like this, this is mostly just Hatron Brave Engine or um, uh, another name in the form of Lao Lao or Lily, where I can then with Queen Hong at the other one. Um, so it's not too important. Let's just say we draw um, a dead card. Uh, let's say we draw a droplet. Okay, so we draw a droplet. Um, now <coughs> we use the Queen Hong to add a Lao Lao. We discard the droplet. Then we use Lao Lao on the Chucha. We will be sending the Lian. Then we will revive actually the Lulu here. Then affect Nian. Um, by the way, this plays heavily into all sort of hand traps, and it's definitely not something you want to rely on on a, a like play to play basis. But in the current meta, I think we can get away with this because there's realistically not a lot of hand traps running around. And if I know what I'm playing against, or I have more resources for me, there are definitely other lines which you want to go for. But this is, for example, a line you definitely want to go for against the elements. Um, but more on that later when we talk about playing around stuff. So now we overlay Lao Lao and Charge Warrior into Beatrice. Effect Beatrice, very important to always um, know what you want to be sending. Think a few steps ahead. Um, you always want to be sending a virtual world, but sometimes if you go with Lily plus Lalo into it, it can be tough to decide what you want to send. Uh, just prepare your mind for it and uh, look a few steps ahead. Um, send Beatrice, and uh, not Beatrice, Enchantress, Enchantress at ride. Uh, then we activate the ride. We will get a token, which 
use it, the where we put it doesn't really matter. Uh, currently, there's nothing really that punishes us for uh, for anything uh, placement wise. I think so. It should be fine. Um, so now here we use the adventure to add ourselves a griffin, pitching one card, uh, summon the griffin effect. Where's the Draco back? There's the Draco back. At the Draco back, uh, now we can use this for a Jan Wu if we had any form of extender, uh, be it another name, be it a just uh, normal summon of any sorts, uh, we could use it to uh, extend into some more. And now we just finish it off by synchroing into a Baron. And then we would like to use the Jan Wu before we. Um, Go into the Nian just because we want to recycle it sometimes, uh, but not all the times. More on that later, of course. Um, we synchro these into a Dawn Dragster. And now we can pass. Uh, in the end phase, we would add back this. So now we have five car uh, four cards in hand. We have an adventure on the field, which gives us additional um, extenders in the form of, form of a level four. We have a Chucha Pop, we have a Spell Negate, we have an Omni Negate plus the Scythe Lock going on fast. We have a uh, guaranteed follow up in the form of Lulu plus Chucha. Uh, and like I said, we have four card, uh, three other cards in hand. We have the John Wu, so even if the Chucha gets hit, we still have a way to get a Virtual World on the field um, in the following turn. And so this looks all good. And how we would play it out in the opponent's turn, of course, is in the draw or standby phase. It doesn't matter. We use the Beatrice, um, sent the Scythe. And then here we activate Scythe effect, um, target itself, Scythe, summon Scythe, effect Scythe on field. And now if the opponent decides to droplet it, we still have a Chucha. If they want to Chalice or Impermit, we still have the Dawn Dragster. Um, if they Gamma it, we are kind of screwed, but that's just the Gamma. And most of the time Gamma will, be co uh, will come in your turn, just because the opponent wants to stop your whole turn. Um, so that's not really something we have to um, play around. And most importantly, if the opponent wants to super poly us, they can only do it if they play the uh, Mud Dragon, and then they have to do it on this, on these two, but we do have ways to play around that, um, and I'm gonna showcase you guys those later as well. So, this is the most basic combo, you always want to be ending on this, the additional um, stuff you can do beforehand, um, if you had one extender here, and we were not playing against tier elements, you could go for a Shen Shen just to give you additional follow-up, a uh, problem is with Shen Shen, it does open up a super poly on the Beatrice, uh, so we want to minimize our usage of that. Um, of course, depending on the matchup, and you know if they have hand traps, we want to commit into an early crystal wing. Um, also, again, a problem with that, it is a wind, so it does open up Mud Dragon against crystal wing, so we don't want to do that against the elements as well, uh, unless your hand is completely gassed out. For example, you, you have everything. I had a hand where I ended on um, these against tier elements, be just because... My hand allowed it me to do and if i play i can of course play around the super polymerization but there are so many other different cards um so i decided to end on this and my opponent just otk through uh, otk me through it because the super poly these pitched uh, bigfoot effect bigfoot pop this and i didn't have a snow in the deck because i started it out because i think uh, thought it wouldn't do enough and then i he just otk me through it yeah so definitely um Take that into consideration. Super Polymerization is the only card plus droplet which can reliably hit this combo. Um, so play around it accordingly. But uh, I'm going to showcase you guys how I do it later on. So let's talk about an early crystal ring out. How you want to do it. When you want to do it. Against which decks you want to do it. All of that will come out. So this is the most basic scenario where um, an early crystal ring route would come up. Um, all you need for it is a way into... Um, Talking, of course, it's easily done with Lily Emergency Teleport. Emergency Teleport in that case would summon um, Lulu because it's a tuner, and then you can use Lily to send Chucha, uh, make it level 6, and then you can go into very early Crystal Ring. Um, problem with that is you need something to set with it. A lot of times this will be Kowloon because you will still need a good amount of names in your, um, in your de hand to uh, combo off after this. And when you want to do it, of course, it is um, a lot of game ones you want to go for it if you have the ability to do, because there are still hand traps running around, and I'd rather play around all of those hand traps, um, be it Nib, Ash, um, Impermanence, all of these cards you can force out with this. 
and then you can continue to combo. Of course, it does play into super polymerization, but that's just something that you have to uh, do because super polymerization is only a three off, and with Crystal Wing, you play around way more cards, um, which can hit you equally hard, especially in the Biro, can hit you really hard in a deck like uh, built like this currently. Um, so you want to go for it, and I'm going to showcase you how. So here we go. We will um, activate the emergency teleport. Um, of course, there are different ways to do this. If you have like a, a shit ton of um, names hard drawn, if you have a brave engine hard drawn, plus a few names, you can go for it. There are multiple ways, but this is the most basic one. Um, we will summon a little. Um, then we use the... Lily on the Lulu, we will be sending a Queen Long plus a Tutor. And then we use the Tutor on the Lulu, make it level 6. Uh, special summon the Tolkien by sending these two to the graveyard. That's the third summon, and then we set something. Effect 4 summon Crystal Wing is pretty good, guys, not gonna lie. Um, just uh, insulating all of your plates for the future from one hand trap. Um, so now we activate the Kaloon. Activate the second future out of our deck. Um, then we use the Queen Long. To add, of course, a Lulu at this point. Um, discarding one droplet, and now we use Lulu on the Chucha. Send a Queen Long, and from here on you have to think, okay, uh, what are the other cards? You of course would like to um, send a GG, but if we only send a GG here, we don't really have ways to continue our whole combo. Um, for example, if you play against like a weird rogue deck, like um, the uh, Marincess, Salaman Great, you could definitely just go for a Shen Shen Crystal Wing Chucha Pass here with the most follow up available to you. This is definitely still something the deck can do, and you should see. Um, but uh, if you don't know what you're up to, your game one, you definitely want to commit into the Scythe Lock, and you definitely want to search a Lala here, just because we have the Queen Long Engrave, so we do have the ability to. Um, to um, to have a follow-up so we we are not completely without follow-up but of course gg adback is the best follow-up available to us uh, so now we use the lao lao on the uh let me think here quick in this case you would do it on the lulu because we want to be able to send janru um summon the lulu summon the uh summon itself summon the lily and now we turn these into beatrice and from here on, this is pretty standard. Um, effect Beatrice, send the Lao Lao. In this case, you probably want to send the Lily, uh, just because the extension route here would be Ascension again, and you want to open that up with this card. Uh, send Enchantress, effect Enchantress, add right, effect right, um, summon token, and then... get the adventure out of the deck. Uh, we still have one card in hand, so we are more than fine to just activate this. Um, in a hand like this, you could think about um, going for the Enchantress line to just get a little more follow-up. Um, but we can still end on full combo, so we definitely want to do it, and we are still playing into it. We're playing against super, into Super Poly uh, no matter what, so we can play around it the most optimal way by adding Griffin, sending this, summoning it, um, searching Draco back, and now we turn these into a Griffin, uh, into a Baron. We use the John Wu, target the Lulu, pitch the Draco back. Uh, you can equip it, but it doesn't matter because we will turn these into a Synchro Seven. This is the main deck. There will be won't be a synchro seven in there. So this is the end board. Let's the focus kick in. The focus is not coming, guys. Okay, there's the focus again. So this is the end board. Um, 
what this does is even if the opponent has super poly for these two we still have meaningful disruption against them um, especially danger tier elements actually does get hit by a, by a snow so the main game plan would be of course in stamper phase to send the snow and if the opponent does super poly us in draw phase um, it would be on these two of course they could do this but this is still a very threatening board so we would be fine with either way um, if these get super poly you have an um, have a plan B and just sending snow and then you end on Beatrice, Dawn Drexa, Chucha Snow, which is still very threatening. If there is no super polymerization, we would just send the Scythe and continue on with the Scythe Lock. Crystal Ring also really good by protecting the Scythe Lock from DD Crows. Um, that's basically maybe a Ghost Bell as well, um, but for Ghost Bell we would of course have the Verone itself. Um, so this is really good. Um, yeah, so this is uh, how you do an early crystal wing route. Uh, like I said, this is something you have to use cautiously. You would probably never want to use it against tier elements unless you guys have everything in your hand as already so you can play around um, in Huffins um, while also playing around a multitude of, multitude of cards, especially if you can end on it like this. You will have the ability to, um, even if the super polymerization comes, you will still have like two to three disruptions against them depending on how their hand uh, shapes up. Problem with with Mud Dragon, it does kind of turn off two of your um, disruptions in the form of Chucha and Snow um, quite early on. But later on, you can still use them quite effectively because the first three bodies, they don't really go into anything meaningful apart from Curious. And after Curious, you can then use the uh, disruptions in Chucha and Snow pretty good. Um, so talking about super polymerization, what is the main way to play around it? I'm going to showcase you guys in the next clip. So. Um, like I said, we can play around Super Polymerization quite consistently. All we need to do for it is have an either a hard drawn Wave Engine or not as good would be a hard drawn Scythe. Um, reason for that is we can do the whole combo in this one. Um, but instead of sending the Brave Engine with the Beatrice, we are actually allowed to end, uh, send the Scythe with the Brave Engine. And so if you think about the, the basic end board for us then, so we would have a Chucha. We would have a Dawn Drexa, we would have a Barone, um, and that would be it with this hand. Um, we could then, in the opponent's standby phase, we are not uh, forced to send the Scythe, so the opponent can super poly these two, but we would still have the Barone lying around there. So uh, if they super poly us, we are fine, we can still side block in the standby phase, and if they don't super poly us, we have the ability to send a Snow into the deck, into the graveyard, having an additional follow up or a disruption against the opponent um so this is the main way how you play around um super polymerization with this deck um like i said all for all the other cards we have the crystal ring line or we have the uh, extension with an additional name into shen shen to play around the droplet or at least make it more resource uh, um inefficient for the opponent to use the droplet um so they can't don't have enough resources to crack our board plus otk us and our follow-up should still be pretty fine to play around uh those sorts of card all the other board breakers like dark ruler lightning storm um the lava golem um steer mode they can definitely hurt the deck especially if you uh, waste some resources while coming because you did the line route uh, the, the the line wrong um they definitely don't really do a lot as long as you have a way into a virtual world um and have a virtual on the, in the hand you can you don't really care about your um, board getting blown up so even if we scythe lock here um and then we get uh, even lead and we couldn't go into a Don Drexa because we maybe got hand trapped or something. We can still just keep the Chucha on the board. And then we still have a Chucha pop against um, maybe like a Brave Engine, which the opponent could still have. Um, and then next turn we can just Lulu on the uh, on the Chucha. And if the don opponent doesn't have any disruption, Lulu on Chucha is definitely just an OTK. Um, no matter how you do it, you cannot screw it up at that point. So that's how you... Um, Play around scythe uh, about around super polymerization the most optimal way it's most of the time it is just hard drawn a brave engine you could also get into this by prosperity but speaking about it when do i actually activate prosperity and when do i not use it so here we are at the most standard hand like from the first part of the video again we have lulu plus kowloon and we have a prosperity in our hand would i actually activate the prosperity here so um if you think about using the prosperity you gotta kind of look um a few steps ahead into the combo um first check out how okay how many draws will i actually get in the combo if you only get one draw it's definitely good to activate just activate the prosperity and get like dig for some broken cards some broken extenders and most importantly 
if your hand trip would just die to one, uh, if your hand would just die to one interaction, like an ash on the lily here would be turn ending. You definitely want to activate the prosperity and dig for an additional name, dig for a brave engine to force out the one disruption. Uh, and most of the times, uh, I've never had a prosperity uh, within this deck. You will get some meaningful um, stuff. Sometimes it will just be a Lao Lao uh, as the only name, but it's still better than nothing. So most of the time your prosperity would look something like this. In this case, you could probably just snag the Liddy or the GG, it doesn't really matter. And then you can just continue uh, through the combo, even if your Lulu gets Ash. Um, of course, you could also get the uh, Enchant, uh, the Ride, which is also something very, uh, you could do um, to play around this hard drawn super polymerization of the opponent has. So if your hand dies to one hand trip, you definitely always want to use the, um, the pot, of, pot of Prosperity first. Um, going second, I almost always use the Pot of Prosperity just to bait out and negate. Um, especially post side, it is even better. Uh, pre side, it can it can be kind of like Luster, but then again, you don't really need the draws pre, um, post side because you're just trying to break the opponent's board and end up like a Zeus plus Chucho or something like that. Um, so definitely post side always go for prosperity for six. Um, pre side always go for prosperity plus six uh, for six if your hand dies to one hand trap, and most of the time. Um, uh, you will only go for a draw one route anyway, so Prosperity is basically always good. Prosperity is basically only really bad to use if your hand is something like, looking like, like this, for example. Um, if this is your hand, you definitely don't need to use Prosperity because you will do full combo even through multiple hand traps with this. And Prosperity would just uh, minus you in the end. You wouldn't get anything meaningful from it. You will definitely need one to two discards. So one could be the Enchantress, speaking about that later on and one could be the Prosperity. So definitely don't use Prosperity if your hand is like completely insane. Um, speaking about, prosper about Prosperity, what are the actual banishes? So the actual banishes are quite easy for the most part. It will always be these two, unless um, I really need another Synchro 6, but this rarely ever came up for me where I needed it. Um, so it will always, always be these uh, two. Then depending on the matchup, it will always be a changing because I don't really go for it in the first turn. But if the matchup is very uh, tower heavy, for example, I know it's against Attic Nist, I could definitely use the, use the changing in the next turn. So I want to keep it. Um, do I have the option to go for a Crystal Wing route? Um, these two can come out. Uh, you will definitely know it. A lot of times you won't have the um, luxury to go for a Crystal Ring, especially if you're forced to use the Prosperity early on. Um, so I stick away from that for most of the time. Um, then you have other cards like Vermilion Dragon, which only really comes up if we have exactly Quinglong. So if my hand is Quinglong plus nothing, I will keep a Vermilion just in case the only name I add is um, a Lily. So I have the uh, ability to go for that route. Um, then we have cards like Breaksword, which are cards you can um, get out for going first, just like um, the Gaia Charge. Uh, these are stuff which you can side out going first. So, for example, if you have a crystal ring um, route available to you, you can banish like these. If you, um, for example, only have Queen Long and you're playing against Attic Nister, you could keep these two and then banish these. If we are going second, um, we would, of course, want to keep those in and we um, banish just these. So these are the, the most basic forms. You always want to keep in a Beatrice. Um, a Baron, a Don Drexler, you can sometimes banish if the uh, matchup is not really uh, spell trap heavy. Um, I do this against uh, stuff like Salomon Grade, um, everything where spell trap negate is just not really impactful, especially uh, post turn one or against decks which just don't really do a lot of um, play a lot of um, defensive cards like uh, tier elements, for example. The Don Drexler doesn't really do a lot against this matchup. Um, so you can definitely just leave it out, especially because it opens up into super polymerization. Um, you almost always want to leave Enchantion uh, against Flo Wanderies. You could banish it, uh, but then again, in a very simplified game state, this is still just a recurring 2.8k beat stick. Juju is a mandatory keep because it's a Synchro 6. Um, and M7 Zeus are also, in my opinion, mandatory just because M7 is in a grind game super important to use uh, because you want to recycle your names and Zeus is just a boss monster. Um, so those are the prosperity banishes, um, how I go about it. Um, I'm still, I'm pretty convinced uh, I do it the correct way. Sometimes I 
uh, miss miss value the crystal wing package and i keep it in but i can't really go for it and then i miss the break sword but this rarely happens it happened before um but it happens less and less uh, the more i play the deck of course and lastly let's speak about the usage of the brave engine because in, in my opinion it's very important especially if you play against a uh, hand trap heavy deck where and when you want to use the brave engine so lastly let's talk about the usage of an hard drawn brave engine um, you should never get baited by using it to just bait on a hand trap if you hand place inherently through a, a few disruptions. Um, as the only hand traps this baits, of course, are Gamma, Ash, and Ghost Bell. And if you just um, play it out correctly, you should be fine. For example, in a hand like this, you could first go for uh, Kowloon and then use the Lulu on that. This will always get an Ash. And if this doesn't get Ashed, you can just send the Queen Long. Um, add a GG and then use the um, Enchantress as a discard fodder for the um, for the Queen Long, and that way you play with your resources more effectively. You've um, baited out hand trips on the Brave Engine because it is super important to actually resolve this because this does let you um, go into the uh, actual side lock because it gives you the level 4 and the level 7 you need for the synchros. And if you don't resolve this, your end board will be significantly, significantly weaker especially in the current meta game ending on Shen Shen future um, and crystal wing is not really enough um, depending on the matchup you can go into the snow uh, via the Beatrice and then you can still end on future snow crystal wing or future snow uh, Shen Shen which is fine enough against sprite but if they have like a few board breakers like or like a cult by the grave or stuff like that it can be quite tough so you always want to resolve the uh, brave engine whenever possible beautiful card holy shit um so yeah definitely keep that in mind the brave engine is not just a glow for a call by the grave in this deck it is definitely an engine you want to resolve and you can sacrifice some form of your uh, virtual engine for it just because in a hand like this if you use kaloon here lulu if this gets ashed we are so fine because you could just use the um the lily on the uh, on the chuchu and then we still get the queen long and we still have access to two names um a third name would be the normal summon so we can still full combo and then have the brave engine with us um, for the whole turn and if you get brave engine here so if the brave engine gets ashed here and we are stuck with these we cannot end on anything meaningful um against the elements for example and they could easily break our board um speaking about that of course the elements would not play an ash so you're fine against that uh, so always keep that in mind so um what you want to take away from this video guys is definitely know the matchup if you play against the elements, it plays completely differently than it plays against all the other decks just because the elements doesn't play any hand trips, but it plays super polymerization with Mud Dragon, which a lot of decks are not on right now. So it can be very dangerous. And um, if you're playing against Sprite Blind, you definitely want to go for a Crystal Wing route um, just because it does protect your hand tra uh, from hand traps. But then again, there are Sprite lists which even run the super polymerization with the Mud Dragon. Um, these are all things you want to take into consideration when playing out the hand. Uh, think about okay what can this hand beat um, there are a few things you will have to play into this just the um, the nature of Yu-Gi-Oh uh, but you can play around a lot of stuff with this deck it's uh, just feels super rewarding in my opinion to know your matchups know the hand how you play around certain things and then you actually see the opponent having these certain things and you just played around them accordingly because you know the deck so well and then you still side lock them through two very good defensive cards just because you played out your hand probably so Keep that in mind, guys. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You could take a lot of away from it for your own virtual gameplay. In my opinion, this feels super strong right now just because Cypherlocking in the standby phase is very strong right now and a lot of decks are not well prepared for it. The only real good cards against that are Droplet and Super Polymerization and we can play around a Super Polymerization most of the times. Um, and if there's a Droplet, the opponent will have to commit quite heavily into it and we would still have um, quite a good amount of disruption afterwards so hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, leave a like if you enjoyed it class is dismissed you guys are, are free to leave perhaps the sunrise out peace